All right, so welcome to uh, the video for any cubic slicer. Um, this is um, for anyone really, but uh, targeted at the people who are at our design to make a difference uh, professional development. Um, if this is your first time using the slicer, awesome, fantastic. Um, if you've been using it for a while, but trying to learn some tips and tricks, that's cool as well. Uh, welcome. So first off, we got to be able to find it right in our computer and you've already downloaded it. And usually this is how I access it. I hit start and I just type in any, and there is the slicer, any cubic slicer. And I go ahead and I click on it and it's going to go ahead and open it up. Notice I have version 1.44. That is the one you should be using. And when it opens up um, and it, it it lets you know that there's a new version and it's not a new version of any cubic slicer. It's an entirely different slicer. Um, it looks like this. And I know there's a lot of similarities right away when you kind of open up the two programs, but we are not going to be um, using this right now. So this video is not about any cubic next. Uh, this is about any cubic slicer. So the current version is 1.44. Even if you accidentally hit update, it doesn't delete the old one. It just downloads a completely new piece of software. So you still have access to this. So you can go ahead and hit later. You can just X out of this. And here we have our virtual space. This represents the bed of your printer. And if you've worked with design to make a difference over the last couple of years, you have one of two machines. You either have the AnyCubic Cobra 2 or the AnyCubic Cobra 2 Pro. There are some subtle differences. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure um, is that you select the right printers. Um, if you only have the Cobra 2 Pro because you're new this year, fantastic, choose that. If you have both, you can select both and we can toggle between both of them. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that a little bit later. Right now, I'm going to assume you're new this year and you are looking at the AnyCubic Cobra 2 Pro. I know it's a mouthful. Great little printer, um, super fast. And when you have the settings dialed in, um, really, really reliable. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get something ready to print. Um, to the left, I have menus that are all grayed out because I have nothing on the bed. To the right, I have even more menus um, and, and options. And we're going to go through the, the minimal number of, of options uh, to get a successful print. So first things first, I need to bring in a file. And I want to remind you those file types most often end in STL. So I got a bunch saved on my computer. Uh, if you were here for the um, training, um, we designed small little book openers that allow you to hold a book open with one hand. So that is what's called Greg's part one. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that really rudimentary rough part that we made with Tinkercad and the time that we had together. But when I bring it in, this is what it looks like. And it sits on the bed. Um, now I'm using a mouse. I definitely recommend you use a mouse because I'm going to like right click, click. I'm going to use the scroll wheel. Um, if I right click and hold, I can drag and pan the entire bed, right? If I use the mouse, I can scroll in and out. And if I left click on the bed, I can move the bed around, right? Right click, left click, scroll wheel. So the first thing that we talked about when we looked at the slicer was having the part correctly oriented on the bed. And remember, you want as much touching the bed as possible. Now, this is already set up that way because I just happen to design it this way. And knowing how to design parts for the printer, I, I try to do this often. But this part could have landed, and I'm going to show you how to do some of this in a second, like this. There is no way I would print this part because literally it touches the bed at one point. And if you remember, what we said is the key to getting a good print is that first layer has to stick to the bed. So flat parts print better than rounded parts. And flat parts that touch the bed print better than rounded parts or flat parts that don't. 
So I'm going to go ahead and reorient this. When I select the part, I get access to all these menus. There's a few ways to do it. If I click on rotate, it brings up either like lines I can grab, right? I can physically try to grab it with my hand or my mouse, excuse me. Or I get little menus and I can attempt to type things in like 90, right? Or 180. I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset button. So that's how I brought this up, right? I knew that I wanted to mess with this on the X axis. And if you just highlight it on the mouse, it'll tell you which way it's going to go ahead and rotate it. I can think about rotating it two ways, positive direction, or I can actually type it in in a negative direction, and that's just going to rotate it the opposite way. There is somewhat of a shortcut version of this, and it's the next menu down, lay on face and if I click that, it's going to give me these little white highlights and I can just choose what I want to touch the bed. So if I come up here and I just choose that white highlight, it's going to automatically put it on the bed. And we're like one step closer to getting ready to print. Um, some other options here, which we can talk about in later videos, but I also might want to print more than one. So if it's another part like this, I can just import somebody else's file from my downloads. Um, I don't know what this is. Let's see. Oh, that's somebody else's. And I know because it's a little bit different than mine. Um, it actually might be mine. I just didn't rename it. So if I want to see them and I want to move them, there's this easy way to arrange everything. On this slicer, it's called a layout. And if I just go ahead and click on it, it's going to apply a distance. In this case, it's default to six millimeters. When I hit apply, uh, they were different parts. It separates them to the most effective and like efficient way that the printer can move around the bed, right? So I could easily print both of these parts at once if I wanted to. I'll leave them both on here for now. In this case, um, for this video, we're not going to talk about support material. We'll talk about that in a second one because I don't want it to be too long. But this part is ready to go. If I just want to get this ready to print, I now move over to the right side of the window. I am selected the right printer. It is the AnyCubic Cobra 2 Pro. Um, depending on what kind of filaments that you might find profiles for, uh, there's a lot we could get into with this slicer. Let's just assume you picked a default. It doesn't really matter. They're all really similar. Um, here you have some qualities that you can make. The, it's almost like resolution in a uh, picture. I almost always leave it on normal. There are a few things that we can mess with. One is the infill. If you want to remind you, these parts are not solid. So the inside has a pattern. You're going to be able to see that in a second. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Jump ahead a little bit. Don't worry about it. We'll go over this again. And I hit slice now. And before I do anything with it, this slicer allows me to move this little um, slider, and it'll show me layer by layer by layer by layer um, what the plastic's going to look like. It's a really powerful tool to show um, and kind of, uh, if you're working with students, show them how the part's going to print. So you can see this inside where there's red is where the plastic is, and where it's hollow, it, it is. It's literally hollow. So this is 15% infill, which means it's basically 85% air. Um, I know 85% air sounds like a lot, but that's actually a lot of plastic. Uh, it's rare I ever go higher than 15. In fact, I usually set it to 10. Now, a couple of things I want you to look, these parts are not the same height. So whereas the part that is a, at the top that is a little bit shorter, it's kind of already finished. So when I get down here, I can actually see that these two parts are going to be printed at the same time. And then this one's going to finish and the other part is going to continue. Right, The whole thing isn't in infill. There's solid top and bottom layers. These are all uh, settings that you can change if you want. You don't necessarily have to. They're not part of this video. So before I have done that, I might want to ch change my infill density. And it gives you some kind of default um, places to go. 80, 75, 60, 50, 40, 30. 15 is one of them. 10. If I really wanted to put that, I can put any number I want. I can go into more settings. I click on more settings and this menu pops up. 
with so much information. Again, we're not going to talk about all of it. The only thing I have to worry about is infill. And I can go up to this first little um, menu and I can just type in five for 5%. There's no enter, there's no save. It's kind of Google Doc-ish where it like kind of saves itself and I just hit the X button to get out of here. This molecule, or molecule, geez, I teach chemistry, I'm sorry. <laughs> this model doesn't need support. That's gonna be talked about in another video. When do we need support, when don't we? Uh, it's turned currently to off or none. And then the other little piece of information that we might want to toggle on and off is what's called a brim. And again, I'll show you what, the, what they are and why I might want one or not. I'm going to go ahead and hit slicer now. And it's going to preview it for me if I move down this little slider again, right? So there's 5% and it's obviously much less dense than the 10%, right? Um, half as much. But when I go back to the original line, I see a couple of different colors here. Now I'm colorblind and I've asked, so this is green. These are like orange and yellow, and this is more of like a purple, right? So the orange and yellow represents the outline. The purple represents like the solid layer. And then this green is what's called a brim. It's this extra little piece of plastic that the printer lays down to help get the part to stick. It's awesome when it's needed. It's a pain when it's not, because you gotta peel that off. It should peel off pretty easily, but it'll leave some like kind of surface defects. It'll make the part look not as professional. So in a case like this, since there's so much touching the bed, I really don't need the brim. And you might learn through trial and error and experience when you want to turn that brim on or off. You might say, forget it. I'm leaving the brim on all the time. And that's fine. I'll turn it off just to show you what it looks like when I put the slicer back on and I preview it. That brim is now gone. Those green pieces of plastic. So it helps with bed adhesion. If the part doesn't stick to the bed, it's gonna fall off. It's gonna ruin the print. All right, so we are now kind of ready to go and get this on our um, flash drive. We're gonna be using the flash drive to print. I don't know how many people out there can set up Wi-Fi or have access to that uh, kind of technology, but the printer came with a flash drive. And once we're ready to go, we go ahead and hit export our G code. And we're going to export it to a local disk. It's then going to ask me, where do I want to put it? And I'm going to insert a flash drive. Now, the name of the part, it's, it's kind of cool how they name it. They name it based off of the name when you imported it, Greg's part one. Now notice it's not both of them, it's just one of them. And then it gives me some information about the print itself, how long it's gonna take, 22 minutes, um, the plastic I'm using, the date, it's November 15th today when I'm making this, as you kind of see in the bottom right of my uh, computer. So I can leave it that way or I can name it anything I want, right? Um, Greg's test part. And the only thing I need to do is make sure that it goes on the flash drive. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick that USB flash drive. You can already see I've been printing a ton for personal use and my class. Uh, that's a lot, but I want to name it so I can find it in the menu. I go ahead and hit save. I need to wait until it says exporting finished. Some of them are more complex, the parts. It takes longer for the computer to slice it into the individual layers. Um, but as soon as I see exporting finished, I can just X out of here. I can take the flash drive out, go to my printer, stick it in, and I am now ready to print. Notice I didn't change any of the other settings. Um, so I, I will mention them for a second. Um, in future videos, we'll talk about them in more detail. But when I go back to more settings, I had options up here to change settings about the filament itself. What type is it? What are my temperatures? The default temperatures for the Pro are pretty good. The only thing I've ever really done is turn the temperature up a little bit to 230. And this is when I'm using high speed PLA. 
the Cobra 2 Pro is fast. And the high speed PLA seems to be a little bit more viscous when it's melted and it prints a little bit better. Um, if you notice some of the prints aren't coming out that well, that's one thing you can try to do is raise the temperature of the plastic a little bit. Um, I rarely, rarely go above 230 with PLA. There's a couple out there that, that I have, but for anything I've done in class or for myself, um, between 215 and 230 seem to be the best numbers. I've never changed this bed temperature once in my life for PLA. Um, the default is set for 60. We're good to go. So that might be a setting you want to change under filament. You don't have to. If I go back to print settings, again, all of these options, the thing I change the most often is I bump this down to five. You could easily leave it at 10 or the default 15. It'll still print fast. Um, you'll still get really good parts. So I hope that helped um, a little bit of reminder of the stuff that we covered at our design to make a difference professional development. Stay tuned to a video for like more complex models that require support material. It'll be very similar. Um, and thanks for uh, listening.